Drive today, we bring you the BMW i4 road test, a quick ride in the Honda CB300F and bring you a special treat from Britain. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I am Soini That BMW has always been known to put driver's needs first, which is why we were very curious to find out whether the electric cars would also retain this aspect. Here's Tuhin with the first drive review of the BMW i4. Now, if you happen to be someone who likes cars and driving, then this rapid shift towards electrification looks quite bleak, right? But if there was one car maker who you could count on to keep delivering the thrills, even in this one-dimensional age, it would have to be BMW, right? That job rests on the BMW i4 for now. It's the first fully electric BMW sedan after all. The numbers look good. This i4 eDrive 40 is rear-wheel drive, makes 340 PS and 430 Nm and can do its claimed 0 to 100 kmph time of 5.7 seconds even in pouring rain. Pretty much the time-tested BMW Sport Sedan formula then. Now on the road, we're happy to report that the situation is heartening. The i4 feels quite a bit like what it is exactly, a 4 series that happens to be electric. So yes, that typical 4-cylinder grumble, or that quite lively power delivery that you would otherwise find in a BMW of this type isn't there. It's replaced by quite a monotonous but brisker EV torque delivery, that typically flat EV torque curve. But put it into sport mode and the throttle response is sharp enough to bring back some of that excitement. And of course the steering weighs up and the whole thing feels a touch more engaging then. And of course you know how when you put your foot down, a BMW always gives you the thrills with the in-your-seat action. That still continues with the i4. For more sedate driving, you have the Eco Pro and Comfort modes. The Comfort mode finds a nice middle ground. Performance is still sprightly and the steering light enough to not feel like a chore in traffic. Switching to Eco Pro is best kept for longer journeys, where you might need to conserve charge. The i4 feels a touch laboured here, but is still perfectly usable if you find yourself in heavy traffic or even on the highway. But we found it easiest to just leave the i4 in the braking mode in crowded conditions, especially since you don't get paddles to choose between the three levels of regen. In this B mode, the i4 can be driven with just one pedal, slowing down to a complete halt with just the electric motor. This harvests a significant amount of energy and makes life quite simple when you get used to it. That the experience is so close to what you might get from a 3 series isn't surprising. The i4 uses a heavily revised iteration of the CLAR architecture you'd find in most combustion engine BMWs. But the structure has been enhanced to handle the added weight of the EV with new torsion struts, shear panels and a front subframe. Even the suspension setup is unique here. There's not a whole lot to separate the i4 and 320LD in terms of creature comforts. Both get a panoramic sunroof, 3-zone climate control, powered front seats, acoustic glass and leather upholstery. But if you are looking for rear seat comfort and are driven around a lot, the Grand Limousine is the one to pick. It's got a 105mm longer wheelbase than the i4 and has 43mm more rear legroom than a standard 3 series. Now stepping into the i4 is somewhat of an event thanks to these frameless doors. You find them on most BMW coupes. But the real showstopper here is this new iDrive 8 system. It's this huge monolithic curved display and while it is intimidating at first, it's, you've got these vibrant graphics and these crisp colours. It's quite easy to get used to. It's got a phone-like layout with these many icons and you also get physical redundancies here to sort of guide you through them. So while there are many sub-menus, they are quite easy to get used to. Now the i4's battery is quite slim, it's only about 110mm thick, which means that that low committed driving position that you like in BMW sedans that has been carried over to an extent. You still sit a bit higher up, the floor is a bit higher. And you still have that large steering wheel perfectly positioned in front of you. Now the disadvantage of carrying on from an IC architecture is that you don't get those wide open storage spaces that you so expect in an EV. So you still have this wide centre console, you still have regular sized door pockets, and the floor is still quite high. So 
space management isn't quite what you would expect in an EV. But since everything has been carried over from the IC engine BMWs, you get that same level, that very high level of fit, finish and quality. So in that way, the 70 lakhs that you spend on this feel well worth it. The i4 is best used as a four-seater. There's more headroom than the sloping roofline suggests, especially if you're of average height. But the marginally higher floor does eat into underthigh support for rear passengers. There's also a large central tunnel that will make life difficult for the third passenger. Boot space is a useful 470 liters, especially with the large hatch and the folding second row. But with the motor at the rear, there is no spare wheel, a significant drawback considering our road conditions. Now another great trait of the i4 is its ride comfort. Even with these 19-inch M Sport wheels, the i4 will handle most of our road imperfections quite competently. Of course, it's got that typically stiff EV suspension, so there is some pitching and bobbing, especially at low speeds. But that fades away as speeds build. And then the i4 just seems to glide over quite confidently pretty much everything that you can throw at it, as long as they're not too large speed breakers or potholes, because it only has 125 mm of ground clearance and of course not that much suspension travel. So you have to be careful over those. But other than that, it's a calming, comforting experience pretty much however you drive it. And then when you want to get feisty behind the wheel, the i4 still delivers. Of course, it can't quite hide its two-ton curb weight. It's an EV with a large battery pack. But throw it into a corner and you realize that that poise and balance that you expect in a BMW sedan, in the way it feels so confident, that's still present. And there is some sensation to it as well, unlike many other EVs. So you'll find that the i4 will sort of switch and squirm underneath you, but it will still stay true to its line. So that's quite exciting. But hold on a second, because for a few lakhs more than the i4, about four or five lakhs, you can get yourself into one of these, a 530i M Sport, which is a proper old school BMW. To start with, it's a bigger car than the i4 and the 3 Series. You will look at the 530i for the sheer driving pleasure it offers. To start with, that two liter petrol is fizzy, it's vibrant, it's got great alert power delivery. And then with the adaptive chassis that this has, the adaptive dampers, the car just stays poised and glides over the road, whether you're you know, going across a set of bends or you're just on a nice highway cruise. It just feels composed and rock steady all the time. Either way, the BMW i4 should interest you even if you aren't an especially enthusiastic driver. Its WLTP range is 590 kilometers, and in the real world, the i4 does better than most EVs we've driven so far in getting close to these numbers. We managed a city range figure of 495 kilometers, which was largely down to the quite effective B mode. The system recoups a significant amount of energy and the power unit too seems efficient in general. The addition of a heat pump also adds to this impressive range figure. Equally impressive is the i4's efficiency on the highway. We managed 472 kilometers of highway range. It's only a slight dip probably down to the commendable 0.24 coefficient of drag. A useful addition is the charging features integrated into the iDrive system. It allows you to control not just preconditioning and set charging schedules, but will even let you control the current level and the cooling fans. Surprisingly, we think the BMW i4 is one of the better value BMWs you can buy right now. Yes, it could do with better practicality, and maybe some more creature comforts. But for just under rupees 74 lakh on-road Mumbai, you get an EV with genuine long-distance ability that doesn't seem to come at the cost of driving character. It bodes well for the future. Yes, we actually have reached that point in time where if you have 70 to 80 lakhs to spare, then you can choose between BMW sedans that are either battery powered or naturally aspirated engines. We'll take a very quick break here on the show, but coming up on the other side, we'll acquaint you with a new naked street motorcycle from Honda. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive.